Eric Darling here with Darling Data, <clears throat> and uh, this is a promotional video. I know it's hard to believe that Eric Eric Darling would ever promote anything uh, about my, my my past regular session, not, not one of the pre cons that I usually promote because that's how I make money. But this is for my regular session. Everything you know about isolation levels is wrong. This is just the first demo, but if this is the kind of thing that surprises or interests you, you're going to want to come see the whole thing because I have a lot more stuff like this in store for you, all right? So please attend. Uh, you know, this one is actually, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, this one is going to be from the live streaming room too. So you might be able to catch this online, which, which is even more exciting for me because this, this, this session is actually just a secret sleeper cell session for getting you to enable RCSI or snapshot isolation or, or uh, sorry, read committed snapshot isolation or snapshot isolation and all about how read committed is a terrible isolation level. So we're going to have fun with that. Anyway, uh, this is the actual uh, demo script that I'm going to be using. And boy, that's a lot. That's a lot of green. I'm surprised that isn't messing up the green screen. Uh, and this is the sort of intro stuff. And this is uh, something that we can that, that we can talk about when when I'm actually doing the session. But let's talk about something that surprises a lot of people. And we're going to start by looking at a query plan, okay? So I'm going to run this query, and we can just ignore the fact that something else ran with errors before. Uh, so we're going to run this query, and it's going to take, I don't know, I forget how long this thing takes. A few seconds, right? Five seconds, not bad. Uh, this, but again, this isn't a query tuning session, right? If you come to this session and you start talking about query tuning to me, I'm going to get off the stage and hit you. Uh, this is all about isolation levels. So this is, these are the results that get returned when I run this query just when it's running by itself. I'm going to max stop one hint in there to make things a little bit simpler to explain. But if we, come, if we scroll all the way over this way, what we're going to see is this post type ID of 2 in this table right here, okay, from, from these results. And this is the query plan. So we start off, this query actually starts off with this. This is actually the first thing that happens in this query, and we can match that up with the query plan here. We scan that clustered index, we sort that data, then we go into a nested loops join, and that first nested loops join seeks into the post table. This seeks into the, uh, an index called P, and that index called P uh, has the parent ID column in the key, so we are able to seek. So for every parent ID that comes out of this, we are able to seek into the parent ID column in the index, find the columns that we care about there, and then finally we do a key lookup back to the clustered index to get out the rest of the columns that we need for the select list. Now, I've talked in the past, you know, I, I know, select star, bad. Here's the thing, you don't need to do a select star to get a key lookup, and you don't need a select star to get, uh, you know, weird lookup stuff to happen, because SQL Server costs lookups the same, whether it's one column or 5,000 columns, not that you can have a 5,000 column long table, I don't know, maybe with sparse columns, who knows, who cares about all that stuff? Not me, sparse columns for the birds. Anyway, what, what I've done is I've, I've, set up this, I've set up this demo to run a little bit. So this query right here is in my query helper window one, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to run all of this stuff up to the point where uh, there is a rollback of, that, that will happen in the future. Now I'm going to come back over here, and I'm going to run this query. Now this query ran for five seconds before, but this query is going to be blocked now. So I could stand here for five seconds, or 10 seconds, or 20 seconds, or 30 seconds, and this query would not make progress. Because under read committed, the garbage isolation level, read queries get blocked by write queries all the time. It's awful. It's not what you want every, for every query. You probably maybe want it for some queries, but not for every query. That's bonkers. That's insane. Why would you do that? So this thing is just going to sit there and wait and wait and wait like a good dog. It's never going to never going to actually finish until we do some other stuff. Now, I'm going to hide the results for that for a few seconds, and I'm going to show you that this is the query that I put into this third window. This query is going to update post type ID to one for some of the IDs in the post table. Now. Changing a post type ID in the Stack Overflow database is going to be a rare thing. But there are all sorts of reasons why other stuff might get updated or changed. This is just a very easy thing to show you. So this is in my Query Helper 2 window, and I'm going to run this update completely. We can see this update completed successfully. Yeehaw, we finished that. Great, wonderful. Now, here's where the magic happens. This read query over here is still blocked. 
this query over here is still, still has an open transaction and is running. That's what's blocking our select query. But this query over here completed successfully to update post type ID to one for all these IDs. This query wasn't blocked. So we're going to roll this query back because we're going to say, oh, I don't know, we changed our mind. We didn't actually mean to add one millisecond to the last activity date for that particular post ID. So we're going to roll this back. And immediately, we're going to see that this query over here finished. Now, if we look at the execution plan, we're going to see that the times were a lot higher because now we have all the wall clock time from the blocking that happened. This query did not magically just take another extra minute and 35 seconds or so to run. SQL Server includes all the blocking time in this query. You can sort of validate that if you go to the properties and you go to wait stats and you look here, we will see that there was a whole bunch of LCK MS wait. So this query, just waiting to get some, get some shared locks to read some data, got blocked for 96 seconds. It's a long time. It's a bad time, right? Read committed. Boo. You stink. You're awful. But even worse, oh, whoa, weird. My thing is over there a little bit weird. Let's close that. <laughs> but let's come back to the, this, and let's look at the query results now. Now, if you recall before, the first part of the query to run was this part where it found all the rows were post type ID equals two, right? And that's the same query plan pattern that you'll see here, right? This is where we found all the post type ID twos and this is where we sorted them, right? Because we found the top one, right? So we found all these post type ID twos, we got blocked, and then we did all this stuff after we got unblocked here. What does that mean for our query results? Well, before, everything was post type ID 2. Over here, now everything is post type ID 1. That's not a good sign, is it? We're off to a bad start, read committed. So here's the problem with read committed. And a lot of people think that this is not a problem with read committed. They think that read committed is this wonderful snapshot point in view time of their data as it existed when the query ran and it could never return weird results and it operates wonderfully under concurrency and this is exactly, the, this is the right results for everything, but it's not. We have all of these post type ID ones in here. And if I duck down a little bit and sort of move my head and now I'm turning pink and the green screen is getting weird, let's get a little bit closer to avoid too many more issues. But you can see that this is not exactly what we had back the first time. This is some of the weird phenomena that can happen under read committed. You may not always want this. You may actually want the results of an isolation level that has snapshot in the name, like read committed snapshot isolation or snapshot isolation, where you would get more consistent results from queries that run and do this sort of thing. So anyway, this is the kind of stuff that I'll be talking about in my past session. Everything you know about isolation levels is wrong. And if this is the sort of stuff that interests you or bewilders you or befuddles you, or maybe you want to be interested, bewildered and befuddled by this stuff, and you just don't know enough about it yet to, to have any of those things happen to you, you should attend this session. It'll be a good time. It'll be a lot of fun, I promise. Anyway, I'll see you there. Goodbye. I look forward to seeing you in person, smelling your essence. <laughs>